it's difficult to say what the inspiration is because it's really varied. I love plants and animals and looking at those things and they inspire me but then I'm equally inspired by things that I really don't like or things that I'm not sure about. So I kind of, the work is more like an exploration of things that I'm seeing around me with a view to me being able to figure out how I feel about those materials and um, it's about our our relationship with the natural world and how animals interact with the environments that we've created and the, the sort of stark differences that there in that there are between those things but also the way that there's a a crossover between them as well. My studio is on the corner of the River Lee and the River Thames and my journey to work every day I'm cycling along the canal so I'm seeing moorhens and coots and quite often herons as well. And then there's cormorants and outside the studio window there's always various different kinds of gulls and cormorants and herons and things flying past. So it is kind of on the edge of the city and that's apparent there's industrial, there's metalworks across the river and there's the O2 kind of horrible <laughs> silhouette of that in the distance and I really love walking through an uh, industrial environment and quite often those environments are run down and you can notice parts of nature kind of creeping in and see the way that the things sort of start to interact with each other. My work's more intuitive than intellectual, and so whenever I'm making the things, it's like a process of me trying to understand the materials or how they function together, so it's important that I handle them and and kind of, yeah, just, just to understand what they are and the shapes and the connotations of the animals or the seeds or the, whatever materials I'm using and the relationship between those things so ideas inevitably present themselves through those things. Um, but whenever I'm talking about the idea behind the work, it's more my interpretation of those relationships or combinations of, of objects and materials rather than me having started, started out trying to illustrate a point. Inevitably, certain things do, do come across in them. Um, but I don't, I don't ever want to be telling people something and maybe just sharing with them something that I am thinking, but I'm not sure whether it's right or wrong, or I don't want there to be only one possible outcome, basically. It's just kind of a starting point for exploring how the materials connect with each other. I'm interested in minimalism, that's one of the kind of areas of art that would influence me, which probably seems quite strange. Whenever I started making things with organic materials, I was using flies um, and strawberries. The strawberries are fresh, so the work only lasts for a very short period of time. Um, thistle seeds, I certain times of year I just go out collecting loads and loads of them, and with dandelion seeds as well, but I've also got them growing right the front of the studio. Leaves, different kinds of leaves, ones that are dead and dried, ones that have been preserved with glycerin so that they can look alive forever. Torn plastic bags, different colours, polythene bags, all sorts of different animals. Um, foxes, rats, mice, 
different birds, corvids, owls as well, I've used before. Kind of diverse range of materials, but they're all mostly organic. But then obviously they're all assembled on these nylon threads, which is another un inorganic element in the work that kind of connects it all together. I kind of had the idea of the piece beforehand in as much as I, I was interested in the idea of making a form that was a sphere that had been kind of split open and separated. And whenever the opportunity came along and the, the fact that the, the hub used to be a seed warehouse, it seemed like a nice thing to, that, that could be easily related to that space just by refining the idea. So it's made out of thistle seeds and there's a bird kind of appearing to have fallen through it. So it's not entirely obvious whether the bird has kind of, isn't supposed to have fallen from above it, splitting it, or if it's kind of come from the little sphere that's inside. The process of planning it would start on paper, um, making sketches, like any you know, scribbly sketches and quite often words on there as well, just playing about with the forms and it's that point where I kind of figure out whether, what sort of animal should be in there, whether there should be an animal in there or insects or whether it should be seeds. And then I'd make it, when I think I know what I want to do, I'd make a nicer sketch of it just to see what it might look like and to help me kind of understand what the shape of it would be. And once I've decided exactly what the shape would be, then I make a, scale drawing of it on graph paper and um, there's lots of overlaid bits and from there was a plan all the different layers of the sculpture and then that that relates directly to the table here you can see the marks where I've been making so the threads would be stretched on this table and I just refer to these diagrams each individual is slightly different and sort of it's built up like that. Marks are made on the table and then once the threads are hung up, then the seeds are glued on. There's 2,400 threads and there's at least two seeds on each thread actually, so there must be probably 6,000 because there's a lot more than two on the threads at the ends. I've always used animals in my work and I think maybe at the beginning I would have been completely anti-taxidermy either because I was really interested in the, the reality of the materials and to make a taxidermy animal would have made it seem a bit false. Um, so I was working a lot with insects and crows which were just kind of decaying actually. Some of them were completely decayed and some of them were still in the process. It was actually fantastic, Mr. Fox. I I wanted to make that piece of work, and you can't make a dead fox stand up unless you taxidermy it. So I started to teach myself how to do taxidermy, so I could realise that piece, and then maybe that started the process of my work becoming a bit more static, where the movement is it impli is implied rather than actually occurring. It's just kind of a natural progression from the materials I was already working with, really. For the most part, I do work with animals that are living in the same environment as we live in. So crows and different corvids, magpies and jackdaws and rooks. They inhabit the same environment that we live in and they have a, a certain kind of disregard for us being there in a way. Um, and for me, that kind of represents the more chaotic uh, element of nature that we're constantly trying to control or or distance ourselves from. They're not um, submissive. <coughs> and whenever I'm doing the taxidermy, I do it on a piece of nice paper and the residues of the animal and the measurements of the body that I need to reconstruct it afterwards all get 
collected on that piece of paper. And somewhere down the line, sometimes before the sculpture gets finished and sometimes afterwards, a drawing will be made on the piece of paper, um, sort of representing the, the animal whose bodily fluids are, and measurements and details are on it. It allows me to get a different level of understanding of the of the animals and the materials that I'm working with. And sort of allows me to explore a slightly different aspect of the same idea than, than what the sculpture does. Sometimes it leads to ideas for new pieces of work. Just having sort of inspected the materials more closely. Making things is very important to my interest in kind of furthering my skills in that respect and uh, working on the, the craftsmanship that's behind the sculptures and the drawings as well. It's sort of where my practice stems from, so it, it makes sense to continue to try and push the limits of what I'm capable of making and trying to do it better. I'm fascinated by the idea of creating forms that are made out of thousands and thousands of little bits of completely unconnected individual things which appear to create something solid, but that solidity is an illusion and how that relates to our desire to kind of control or organise or limit nature in some way and how that's completely futile and it's, it's about our own mortality really and not being in control of anything. Mm -hmm.